Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. Stop making the same stupid choices. And notice that I said choices and not mistakes because you can avoid those mistakes if you stop making the stupid choices. So make sure you pay attention. Watch this video the whole way through because I know that God's going to speak to your life. So have you ever found yourself making stupid choices and then you see how it leads you to a stupid mistake? Well, let's learn from the book of Nehemiah. Right now in this book of Nehemiah, what we're about to read, what's going on is that the people have already returned from 70 years of being in exile in Babylon. You've heard of Daniel. That happened in Babylon during the king of Nebuchadnezzar and during other kings. And that exile that lasted 70 years in the book of Daniel that it speaks about and in the book of Nehemiah, it speaks about their return. The reason that they were in exile, pay very close attention because this is why the video is stop making those same stupid choices. In the book of Nehemiah, they have returned from that exile. And the reason that exile happened was because the people of God disobeyed the Lord and went against them and did horrible, horrible choices that led to horrible, horrible mistakes. And they did this for over 300 years. You can read about it in the book of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. They did many horrible choices that led to many horrible and foolish mistakes. But God is so gracious. God is so generous. God is so merciful. The Bible says that mercy triumphs over judgment. The Bible says that God's anger is slow and his love is quick. He's always quicker to show love than he is to show anger. So God would always send them prophets and people and speak to them year after year, decade after decade, century after century. And then eventually he told them in the book of Isaiah and in the book of Jeremiah, he told them, hey, if you don't repent, I'm going to use Babylon to come and punish punish you. I'm going to send you on exile for 70 years. If you don't repent, look at God. He was even telling them what was going to happen. He didn't blindside them. He didn't punish them out of nowhere. He didn't strike them down like lightning from heaven out of nowhere, you know, in the blink of an eye. No, no, no. He gave them more than a hundred years of warning. So that means that generation after generation after generation were deliberately disobeying God, making the same dumb, stupid choices. And God was so merciful and gracious, but the people did not listen. So eventually, God is true and he is not a liar. The Bible says all men are may be proved liars, but God will never be proved a liar. Eventually, God did what he said he was going to do if they didn't listen. And they went to Babylon for 70 years. Now, this is where we step in. After 70 years, the nation that they had left for 70 years was destroyed, crumbled, dilapidated. It was in ruins. It was in shambles. The walls around Israel were torn down. But Nehemiah is used by God to begin a revival. Nehemiah is the cupbearer of the king. The king tells him what's going on. Nehemiah's sad. He says, I'm sad because my nation is torn down. The walls are in ruins. They're nothing what they used to be. My kingdom is horrible. It's ugly. God touches the king's heart. To send Nehemiah back to Israel to rebuild the walls, gives him the money he needs, gives him the lumber he needs, gives him everything he needs to rebuild the city, to rebuild the walls. Nehemiah and the people begin a great work. There's a lot of threats. There's a lot of opposition. Listen, there's a lot of enemies coming against them. So look at everything that's happening. Seven years of exile, 300 years of disobedience, generation after generation after generation, disobeying God, making stupid choices that leading to stupid mistakes, that leading to hard hearts. But God is using Nehemiah to make a revival. They come back. The walls are destroyed. The, the nation is horrible. It's ugly. It's crumbled. It's dilapidated. But God is beginning this revival. As they're beginning this revival, Nehemiah is rebuilding the walls but Sambalat and Tobias are coming against Nehemiah and they're raising up false accusations and they're trying to raise up false enemies and they're trying to stop the plans of God so Nehemiah is focused everybody is focused but Nehemiah notices something and this is why the title of the video is stop making the same stupid choices stop making the same dumb choices making the same dumb choices are going to lead to the same dumb mistakes and eventually, if the person continues to make the same choice, because they're choosing to do it, if they continue to make the same choice, what is going to happen is that that heart is going to become hard towards the Lord. But remember, this didn't happen in one day. It happened over 300 years of disobedience. So Nehemiah, 
One day he enters the city. The walls are already built up. There's a revival going on, not just in the construction, but spiritually in the people also. Remember, they're already returned from the seven years of exile. The nation is beginning to be restored. Uh, their spiritual life is beginning to be restored. There's a revival going on. So one day Nehemiah returns and the walls are built. The city is being restored. But Nehemiah notices something. And I want to ask you a question. If you were these people when Nehemiah returned, what we're about to read, pay attention because you've never heard this, I know, probably in the whole Bible. Would Nehemiah do this to you? That's my question. What Nehemiah is about to do to these people, would Nehemiah do it to you? He returns. The walls are built. The nation is being rebuilt. Nehemiah knows the history and knows why it happened, the seven years of exile and the, the punishment that God gave to the people. Nehemiah knows. But he returns and he sees the people. And he sees something going on. He sees an attitude. He sees a character. He sees the same stupid choice going on that can lead them to that same mistake and the same separation from God. And look what Nehemiah does. Pay attention. I'm going to read it to you. And my question is, be honest with yourself. It's just you watching this video. Be honest with yourself. Would Nehemiah do this to you if when he returned, he saw this in your life? Look what the Bible says, Nehemiah chapter 13, 23 through 27. Look what happened. In those days also I saw the Jews who had married women of Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. These are people of God who married foreign women, who worshiped foreign gods. Half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod, and they could not speak the language of Judah, but only the language of each people. You know what Nehemiah is noticing? The people who had married foreign women that worshiped foreign gods, what he noticed is, when he returned, he saw that their families knew how to speak the language of the foreign gods, the foreign people, but didn't know how to speak the language of their own people. You know what this can represent for you and I today? You know how to live in the flesh. You know the newest song. You know the newest rap song. You know the newest country song. You know everything about the newest movie. You know everything about the culture, everything in society. You know about everything and every anything that's a hot topic, you know about it. But you don't even know what Psalms 23 says. But you don't even know what John 3.16 says. But you don't even know what the word of God says about sin, about righteousness. Now listen, you might know about every song, every movie, everything that's relevant today, but you don't know about the things of God. And Nehemiah is noticing this. They know about the culture of the foreign people, of the foreign gods, but they don't know about the culture of God. And look what Nehemiah does. He says, and I confronted them and cursed them and beat some of them up and pulled out their hair. And I made them take an oath in the name of God saying, you shall not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons or for yourselves. And then look what he says. He says, did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin on account of such women? Among the many nations, there was no king like him. And he was beloved by his God and God made him king over all of Israel. Nevertheless, Foreign women made him even to sin. Shall we then listen to you and do this great evil and act treacherously against our God by marrying foreign women? You know what Nehemiah sees in these men, these characters? He, he comes back to the city and he sees that their families know the culture and know the language of the false nations, of the false gods. And he gets mad and he tells them, hey man, he beats some of them up. He pulls some of their hair. I want you to imagine Nehemiah grabbing those people in the headlock and slapping them on the head and pulling their hair out. Imagine that because that's what the Bible says. He beats some of them and pulls some of their hair out. And then he says, hey. What's going on? He says, don't you remember? That's the reason we were exiled. Don't you remember? That's the reason our nation was crumbled. That's the reason God had to come and punish us. Because Solomon married these foreign women. And marrying the foreign women wasn't the problem. He says, but Solomon married these foreign women. But then they turned his heart against his God. And he began to worship false gods. And he was wise. There was nobody like him. God loved him so much. But his heart was turned from the Lord because of who he had relationships with. And Nehemiah is telling the people, you're not learning the lesson. You're not learning the lesson. You're making the same stupid choices. You're living like the world. You're living for the world. You're living for sin. And you're forgetting about God. That's the reason God had to punish us and destroy us in the first place. That's why the title of this video is, Stop Making the Same Stupid Choices. The whole reason that this happened in Nehemiah's time 
was because they turned their hearts away from the Lord. And here it goes in the revival while the walls are being built up and they're doing the same stupid choices all over again. Here comes the cycle, the repetitive cycle all over again. But Nehemiah confronts them. You know how this applies to us? It's time to be honest with ourselves and analyze ourselves. Am I living for the world? Am I living for the things of the flesh? Am I living for the things of sin? Do I know more about a movie? Do I know more about a timeline than about the things of God? Do I know more about a, a whole series of movies or a whole series of shows? Do I binge watch a show more than what I read the Bible? We need to be honest with ourselves. And when we're honest with ourselves, we're going to be able to grow. And we're going to be able to come up out of those repetitive cycles of destruction. But we need to be honest. And I know that it's not a good thing. It doesn't feel like a good thing. And I know that it doesn't feel good confronting the truth about ourselves. But we need to be honest. Am I binge watching? Am I knowing more about culture in today? Am I more worried about being relevant than about knowing about my God? Don't do that same mistake. Don't neglect your relationship with the Lord. Now, this doesn't mean read the Bible 10 hours in a day. Hey, if one day you do that, go ahead. If you got a day off or something like that, go ahead. But this doesn't mean you got to read the Bible 10 hours a day. This means put God as the foundation of your life. And if it doesn't honor the Lord, you're going to feel conviction. Put God and make God the foundation of your life. The Bible says, place the Lord in front of all your ways and he shall make them straight. The Bible says when you listen to his words and put them to practice, your house will not fall. But if you listen to his words and don't put them to practice, great will be the crash of that house. Put God first. Don't make those same dumb choices so that the cycle can stop. That cycle doesn't have to continue in your life. It can be broken when you make God the foundation and when you make efforts to live out the word of God. When you make efforts to be obedient to the Lord, that cycle will be broken and you will walk in victory in Jesus' mighty name. I want to ask you a question. Was this video an encouragement to your life? If it was, do me a favor, subscribe. I post weekly videos that are aimed to encourage you in your faith. So if this video was an encouragement, subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you wanna show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are always appreciated. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Thank you, God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.